You can read every book, you can have every mentor, but when you step onto the field for the game, you just, you gotta be ready. It, it just can be really hard. Were there headwinds that you faced early in your career because you're a woman? I grew up um, in Baltimore, Maryland. I went to a 12-year girls' school, and we were raised um, to see ourselves as anything that we wanted to be. I was used to raising my hand and always having a voice at the table and feeling confidence in myself. I came crashing down pretty fast in college. I decided to pursue engineering and was one of 10 women in a group of 150 men. And I learned pretty quickly that women needed to have a really clear voice, to know their material, and to speak strongly. One of the other piece of kind of conventional wisdom is that if a guy sees a job that's three levels up for him, he will think, of course I should get that job. Whereas women sometimes find I need to be 100% qualified yes. before that job, before I even apply for it. So I have experienced that myself in a career decision that I was making. And I said, you know, we really need this person to do this, this, and this. And I had this conversation with my husband. And he said, well, that's you. And I said, oh, but I couldn't throw my name in the ring for that. I, I haven't done X, Y, and Z, and I'm not ready for the role. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he said, you're doing this because A, you're qualified, B, you're capable, and C, you bring the passion to this that no one else could be better for this role than you. And he said, if this were me, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. I would have put my name in the ring already. It was really crystallizing for me. I think we are sometimes our own limitation in not believing in ourselves. And when you mentor women and have mentored women over the years, what advice do you find yourself giving them that might be specific to the issue of women in leadership? One of the things I think that really informed my career was pivoting into a role where I owned a P&L. Understanding the way the mechanics of a business work, the growth levers that you have, the accountability of driving profitability for a business really enabled me to think critically, to build a team, to rally them around a goal. Oftentimes, younger women in their careers, I really challenge them to get into those kinds of roles where they're owning a team, they're owning a P&L, they're ultimately accountable for delivering a big part of a strategic plan because I think that positions them well for leadership positions in their future. And I think ultimately the way we're going to solve this problem of only 4% of the CEOs in Fortune 500 companies being women is by priming the pump, right? And making sure that we've got that pipeline of female talent coming up. We have got to open the floodgates so wide so that we have such a great future pipeline of female leadership. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.